talk, Dr. Lika Atakan uh, from uh, McMaster University. His uh, paper is entitled The Role of Ethics in Islamic uh, Jurisprudence, uh, a Muslim uh, Dilemma. Yes, please, welcome to the stage. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullah. Uh, first of all, let me say it's a great honor and a pleasure to be here. Um, and I appreciate and I thank Atabat al Abbasia too in, for the invitation. It's very important to hold such conferences because as I was saying to some colleagues today morning, Shia Islam in the West, in Western academia for the longest period was seen as somehow a deviation from Sunni Islam. So they studied Shia Islam through Sunni books and through Sunni lenses. It is only fairly recently now, in the past few, maybe decade or so, that more Shia books are coming up and uh, spoken or represented by Shia scholars or those who are specialists in Shia studies. So we see now the West is seeing Shia Islam through Shia sources. And that's a big transition, by the way. As I said, for a long time, uh, things were seen very differently. Um, the topic of my paper actually has changed. Uh, I'm going to be talking about Shia tafsir. One of the subjects that has not been studied enough in the Western academia is the development of and the content of Shia tafsir and especially the role of the imams uh, in the Quranic tafsir. So that's going to be my topic. Tafsir itself is a literary activity to comprehend the divine message to unveil or uncover the meanings of the Quran. It is important to understand that an exegete that is a commentator of the Quran is not a disinterested bystander. In fact, the one who is commenting on the Quran through his choice of words or her choice, normally it's a him, uh, their, through their beliefs, biases, bring their own ideas to the tafsir. So in many cases, exegesis or tafsir reveals more about the beliefs of the commentator than about the, com you know, the content of the Quran. To be sure, for the Shias, the relationship of the Imam with the Quran is exegetical. In other words, the Imam provides the exegesis, the tafsir of the Quran. There is another dimension. I cannot go through the whole paper because we have limited time. Another dimension of Shia tafsir is, of course, ta'wil. And ta'wil, generally speaking, is seen as the esoteric aspect of the Quran. In other words, the inner aspects. And there are inner and there are layers of esoteric, esotericism. But why is ta'wil important, especially in Shia Islam? Because it shows that the imams have extra powers or extra abilities, mir miracles, etc., which are only seen through the ta'wil rather than through the tafsir. It is the esoteric, the ta'wil, which justifies the belief in the imam's supernatural and mystical qualities, and more importantly, to interpret the Quran authentically. So the question is not only of tafsir and ta'wil, the authenticity and the authority to interpret the Quran is equally important. Historically, we know that, of course, the Prophet ﷺ himself was seen as the first tafsir because he was the one who was explaining the Qur'an. There is no doubt that the first Mufassir after the Prophet was Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib. In fact, he wrote a, uh, the Qur'an itself, the interpretation of it. And Ibn Nadim says in his book that he went to a person called Ja'far. He doesn't uh, describe who Ja'far is. And he saw fragments of Imam Ali's Qur'an with Ja'far. Historically, we know that there were other uh, disciples of the Imam that I will discuss in a few minutes. But one of the most important mufassir of the Quran was Imam Muhammad al-Baqir alayhi salam. There was a tafsir that he wrote. Unfortunately, most of these books are no longer with us. However, the Imam had a disciple, a very important disciple, who was, he came to be a Zaidi, Abu Jarud. And Abu Jarud's tafsir was transmitted by later scholars and some of his works some of his points in tafsir, which came from Imam al-Baqir, by the way, they are, were available, and we see in uh, al-Qummi's tafsir, we see Qala Abu Jarud, sometimes Qala uh, al-Baqir, and so on. So we know that actually parts of Imam uh, Muhammad al-Baqir's tafsir either came to us through directly through the Imam or through Abu Jarud. 
In fact, Al-Qummi narrates 202 times from Abu Jarud. Another way of we got the tafsir of the imams, and I want to emphasize the role of the imams in the tafsir, is through Tabari himself. Tabari relates no less than 53 times from Imam al-Baqir and Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam. Altogether, the disciples of the imams wrote no less than 100 tafsir of the Quran. We know this because when we go through the works of Najashi and through Tusi, the Rijal works, we find Walahu uh, Kitabu Tafsir, and he has a book of Tafsir and so on. So that tells us that it wasn't only just one or two disciples, no less than 100 disciples of the Imams who got the Tafsir from them themselves. I don't want to go into the details of these um, uh, disciples. I have some of them at least. For example, Ismail bin uh, As Sudi, whose Tafsir was transmitted from Imam al Bakr and Imam al Sadiq. Atiyah, who was al Awfi, who was from Kufa, he transmitted from the tafsir of the Lai ibn Abbas and from Imam Muhammad al Bakr, and apparently he had a five volume work on the Quran. And there are many others. What was interesting is that people like Ibn Tawus had a copy of Abu Jarud's work, and he notes this very clearly in his own work. As I say, because of lack of time, I'm not going to mention all the other disciples. But what is also important that the Imams were actually responsible for the interpretation and the spread of Quranic verses in their own times. We, um, this is, by the way, part of my book which I'm writing now on Shia Tafsir. As I say, in English literature, we only have two main books on Shia Tafsir so far. One was written by uh, a Jew and one was written by a Christian. Isn't it ironic that Jews and Christians write about our Tafsir rather than we write about it? There are a few articles here and there, but book-wise, this is why I want to write a tafsir from the time of the Imams up to the time of Allama Tabatabai. We find also in the tafsir of Ali bin Ibrahim al-Qummi and Ayashi, these are the two main ones, the pre avoided periods, is that they are, well, their style is of tafsir bin Ma'athur that is based only on traditions. They do not really care about the authenticity of these traditions, the accuracy of them. They just report it as they found it. And some of this was, I must admit, not very accurate ones. Therefore, we find with Sheikh Tusi and Sheikh Tabrisi, tell me if it's time. Excuse me, bro, but uh, your title here is related to the role of ethics. Is it I know, to I know, but well, it was actually connected. It was a mix up because I did tell them that uh, uh -huh. my title is but different. You have only three minutes. Three minutes? Yes. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I'm not talking about ethics. I, I did mention at the beginning okay. that uh, my title has changed. I'm sorry. Okay. So in this Tafsir Ma'thur, the title or the discourse was Imam-centered. There was more emphasis on locating the Imam in the Quran. This is by uh, Al-Qummi and Ayashi. In other words, the Quran was interpreted through and to accord with the traditions rather than the other way around. Instead of the hadith corroborating the Quran, the Quran was made to find Shia doctrines. Why was this very important at this time? And I have two minutes, so I will finish soon. The exegesis, the commentators were trying to assure the faithful Shias regarding the validity of their belief that salvation was only possible by accepting the correct Imam. And that correct Imam was through the Tawil of the Quran. Unless they acknowledge the true figure, the Imam, the Shias could not be saved. The Tafsir al-Ma'thur al was also important because it drew boundaries of what was acceptable belief and what was acceptable practices. This textual rendition that claimed to be orthodox also suppressed dialogue because it's just one way coming from an authoritative figure. The Tafsir al is also important as it limits the possible interpretations of the verse. It steers an interpretation in a particular direction and it limits rather than expand Quranic hermeneutics. There is what we call a monovalent reading of the Quran. In other words, the Quran is read only in one particular way. So we find with uh, Tabarsi and Tusi, it's a much different style. There's much more dialogue and more rational interpretation. So in short then, in conclusion then, the Tafsir bil Ma'thur was very important during that time because not only did it transmit the teachings of the Quran, but it ensured that the Shia faithful knew exactly 
from this tafsir what was acceptable belief and practices at the same time exposing those who had who had deviated from the Quran itself. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi uh, Thank you very much, Brof Laqid. Thanks a lot for such... Yeah, I'm sorry uh, about the uh, confusion in titles. Yes, because it is different here. Thank you very much.